Okay, well, hey guys, uh, my name is Greg Gervais and I am the senior pastor of Awakening Church where we're not just a church, we're an awakening. And today we are so blessed to have an amazing guest, Tom Fisher with us. Obviously you see this beautiful man on the screen, how uh, handsome he is right there. But uh, yeah, I know, right? I'm going and I, I have that pathway. But uh, we just want to welcome you guys. We're, we're here obviously to equip every believer to walk like Jesus. And Tom Fisher is like my favorite healing evangelist in the world. Uh, when I started eight years ago, uh, his ministry is instrumental in empowering me, really equipping me just to be able to get the boldness to go out there and do that. And so we've seen thousands of people healed uh, as a result of Jesus through this man now. And so I am just delighted to be able to interview Tom Fisher here today. And uh, we're going to we're going to have um, a little banner up there. But if you guys feel like giving today, we'll throw everything that you give today to toward Tom. Um, his ministry is legit and uh, just saving, honestly, the masses, not trying to pump them up, but it's just amazing. I, I think what's is it cardboard box on uh, YouTube, Tom? Cardboard box shirts. Thanks, Greg, for inviting me to share. You're awesome. I, I've known about, you know. We're just talking to each other for the first time in the last couple of days. I've known about you for a long time, <laughs> yeah. but there's so many people in the world. It's like, it takes a while to end up talking to everybody that, you know, and, uh, so, but yeah, Carbo box church is the name of the ministry. It's a, it's a real church and, uh, we, we love just setting it up and ministering to people. Awesome. Cool. Well, today, uh, this is going to be fun, Tom. So I wanted to, uh, have you on here just because number one, you're awesome. So we just wanted to look at you and, and glisten. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. No, but you really have an amazing, amazing gift uh, to heal the sick, obviously. And that doesn't mean it's esoteric or unobtainable. So I just wanted to, we wanted to kind of get your brain, get your heart and get your process uh, about how you do this, um, who you are. I guess maybe we could start with who you are, kind of like maybe a quick backstory of who you are and then how it kind of led up to what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. That's a great question, Greg, because uh, a, a believer's testimony is very powerful. Uh, we, we, you know, the word says we we overcome uh, the enemy, right, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So, so our testimony is so important. In fact, in fact, when I when I share about the first time I was ever supernaturally healed back in 1997. I can share every detail of that situation, but if you asked me to share any particular message I heard in a church over the years, I couldn't do it. Wow! Right? It, it, because that's how powerful testimonies are. So, like when you when you hear somebody tell their story of what you know, uh, it's it really helps people a lot. And so, with me, I'm 56 years old. I've been a spirit-filled born again Christian since August 19th, 1991. Uh, when I came to the Lord, I was not searching for Jesus. In fact, I came to Jesus in what I would consider a really strange way, uh, and and what some people would be like think that wow, that doesn't even seem legit <laughs> because <laughs> and and, I, and it's because I was uh, I was living in an apartment in Freehold, New Jersey, because I was raised in uh, in New Jersey for twenty years of my life and. Uh, at one point uh, in 1991, I was living in Freehold in an apartment, and I had a guy come in to put a phone into the apartment that I was living in. And uh, when he came in, I started sharing with him about the Amway business because I was doing Amway. You know, and I'm sure most people have heard of Amway. It's a network marketing business, and uh, yep. you know, you know, soap and all sorts of problems. And it's not problems, stuff. <laughs> problems too. <laughs> 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 products and problems <laughs> so, so i was sharing i was sharing with uh, this this man about the amway business to get him to join amway and he starts telling me he starts saying to me it sounds to me like you really love money <laughs> i was like i was not expecting i was like what <laughs> he goes he goes i think you need jesus i was like Oh, well, excuse me? I was not expecting that because the guy is working for the phone company, but he's he's moonlighting. He's really a minister. Wow. <laughs> it's like, so we, I'm selling him on Amway, and he starts selling me on Jesus. <laughs> and wow. 
I'm here. I am. I'm I'm living my life of sin. But like, if you had asked me, if anybody had asked me at that time, if uh, you know, hey, like when you die, are you, you think you're gonna go to heaven? I, I would have been like, yeah, sure. I'm a nice guy. Right. Right. <laughs> But like in reality, I was not a nice guy. But unbelievers don't know this. They don't, they don't know that I say. And so like, so like he's sharing. You know, I'm, I'm living my life. You know, uh, uh, drinking, drug use, cursing, gutter mouth, womenizing. You know, wow. single. And uh, and just like very carnal. You know, but I, I wasn't like a I wasn't a murderer or. A, robbing banks or, or, you know, people breaking into homes, nothing like that. You're just your typical fleshly yeah. carnal life, you know? Yeah. I, I, I respected other people's lives. I, I didn't, I didn't like get into, well, actually I did get into some barroom brawls, <laughs> but, but like, so I was living my life of sin and, uh, and not, not searching for God whatsoever, was not going to church, Never read the Bible in my life except wow. for uh, looking at the pictures in the family Bible, you know, in, uh, and so because uh, I was raised in, you know, traditional Roman Catholic way. And, uh, and so uh, it, when he starts selling me on Jesus, it, it just started like ringing true with me. It was like he was reading, he was telling me scripture verses and I was like, he, he, he quoted John 3.3, 3, you know, you must be born again. Yeah. And I was like, you know. I believe that. I just started believing everything he was saying, and I was wow. saying, and yeah, it was just the weirdest thing. I was like, I, the furthest I was like, there was nothing, nothing led up to this. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, like, but I think I'll, I, I'm starting to feel like I should want to go to church this weekend. Nothing like that whatsoever. Right. It came out of left field, and I was just agreeing with everything he said. And then, and then he said, uh, well, I, I live around the corner from here in, you know, same neighborhood, basically in free old New Jersey. And, uh, he says, I have a pool. And he led me in a prayer to receive Jesus. When I prayed that prayer, there were no bells and whistles. I didn't get any warm, fuzzy feelings. I didn't fall over. You know, it didn't, I didn't think anything happened. And, and so, but he, he said, I, I live around a corner. Watch you come on over to my house. I'll baptize you in my pool. Because it was August 19th, 1991. Wow. So it was, you know, it was that dead of summer. And uh, so he left. And after he left, I changed into swimming trunks and went over to his house. And when I get there, he's in his backyard in his above ground pool. He had a, he had a round above ground pool. And he's standing in the middle of the pool with a Bible in his hand. Wow. And his wife is standing in the back sliding glass doors of the house. And I get there and I'm looking around. I look at him, I look at her, and I just wave to her. <laughs> she waves back. And then I get in the pool and he baptized. He tells me about baptism, which I had no idea about. And then wow. I, I go under. And when I come up, he's when I come up out of the water, he's going, shut up, out of water, yeah, out of water. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what this is, right? <laughs> I don't know. Who, who knows what this is? You know, so I'm, I'm like, uh, um, uh, you know, and he goes, do that. And I was like, what? Do, just do that. Just do that. I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, just, just mimic me. Just, do it. I was like, all right. You know, yes, I'm not stupid. I mean, it's like, you know, right. I, you know, I, I got enough common sense. I was like, all right, shut that, that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, uh, and again, I didn't feel no warm, fuzzy feelings, but, but you know, it, it changed my life. He invited me to his church. The guy did everything right. You know, he invited me. I, I start going to his church. I start reading my Bible. I'm starting to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm beginning. I'm, like, I got this insatiable appetite for reading the Bible, which is bizarre, you know, and I'm, and I'm loving it. I'm sitting loving the preaching in the church. And it's like, it was a weird thing. It totally changed my life, even though I felt no, no, no warm, fuzzy feelings, you know. And then, uh, and so it just went from there. That was not, you know, so what is that like almost 29 years now so yeah wow yeah so i can keep on going like you want me to go from the transition into healing yeah you're like how, how did you that that was an awesome testimony that's a, it, that actually kind of shows that you know as as we're say if we're kind of uh timid about sharing our faith because we don't know where people are at there doesn't always need a process or a setup story for us to share the gospel that people can be right right there Right. Like sometimes we always think there's this transitional uh, phase that people have to go through 20 years to get saved. 
But that means there's a possibility that people could just get saved like you are just just at the drop of a hat, right? Absolutely. It, it awesome. just like happens. Let me turn my screensaver to never go off because like as soon as you started talking to me, my screensaver came on <laughs> and you were gone. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so like amen it's like it's just like that's the way god does it right because it's jesus who saves none of us we don't save ourselves none of us right. gotta, you know we're, we're we're like slammed all of a sudden out of nowhere by something we didn't expect that's what that's I'm incredible you know. that's awesome so like yeah. that's the journey like you got saved right so that's your salvation you got baptized of the spirit and then what what um where did you get the the gist or where did you get the thrust to start begin to heal the sick or to go share your faith with healing the sick or even just sharing your faith like what was the transitional growth there it took a long time because like a lot of christians do this like you know typical churchianity <laughs> i use that too churchianity yeah <laughs> where you just like where like you think that going to church reading your bible and paying your tithe is obedience <laughs> but it's not obedience <laughs> that's that's part of becoming equipped <laughs> right right obedience is being a doer of the word right and so so like <laughs> like 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 most people in the church that's what i did for many many years until i started to realize all right like i have a big mouth you know it's like uh you know, it's like I, I, I'm. I like to talk, and it's I'm from the Northeast. You know, blame it on that. No, or you can blame it on like I'm Irish and German. You know, so you can blame it on a number of things. I got a big mouth. You know, and so like I started to realize like I'm. I must be an evangelist. You know, it's like I, I like to talk. I'm not. I'm not shy. I'm not afraid. I didn't like get boldness after I became a Christian. I was always bold. <laughs> you know, I was always always spoke my mind. Wow. You know, so, like, uh, so once I started to realize from reading the Bible for years and years and years, I started to realize that, hey, I'm supposed to be doing this where, <laughs> you know, the Bible says we're all called to the reconciliation of the faith, right? Okay. That's it. <laughs> and so, That's like, it. I'm supposed to be telling people about Jesus. And so, so, like, I can remember the first time I shared Jesus with somebody. I was living with my brother in Dunellen, New Jersey, and I went to a a laundromat to do laundry and I, sh I there was one other person in the laundromat a guy that looked like maybe he was like maybe 10 years older than me and i was so scared i was like that's it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna tell this guy about jesus no, no, huh. nothing to do with healing no clue about healing <laughs> you know, so like i'm like i just go up there and i start sharing the gospel with him and i was so nervous i was sweating bullets and he listened to the whole thing and when i was done he shook my hand and I immediately sensed within me, and, and I look back now and I realize it was in my spirit, you know, that wow. like that I sensed that he appreciated the fact that I would do that so scared. But he saw how nervous I was, and yet he that yet I still did that. Wow! And that's what he appreciated the most. Wow! <laughs> wow. I was wow. so scared, you know. And then and then uh, slowly, just slowly, telling more and more people. And then, and then I, uh, after a number of years of doing that, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? It's like, and Jesus, you know, he's healing people everywhere. And then, he, and then he's telling his apostles and they, they're healing everybody. And then he tells the apostles to teach the disciples and then they're healing people. I'm like, I'm supposed to be praying for people to get healed. So you, you just got that on your own. Yeah. It's a, well, yeah, right. Nobody, nobody taught me, Greg. There was, I was, the Holy Spirit taught me. I did not go to a, a, a seminar on healing. You know, I, I did, I did, uh, I did a, a online thing with Benny Hinn, but that was after I started getting a desire to heal. I started to see that healing was something I was supposed to be doing. So like I was starting to incorporate that into my evangelism, sharing the gospel. And then after I started incorporating it and I was getting, I wasn't getting results. I was just, oh. you know, I'd pray, I tell people, I tell people, oh, I, I'll pray for you for healing too. God heals, but I wasn't getting results. Wow. Uh, so I would just pray and I would just tell them that. And, and I felt like when God eventually blasted me with the power of the Holy Spirit, I had an experience. I'll share that also. When he did that, I felt as if like he, he was saying, I, I, you know, I better, I better, I better, you know, and get Tom going here because he keeps telling people that I heal. 
you know, and so <laughs> so like, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> and so I got blasted. And from that point on, I was 2008, the late summer of 2008. I got had an experience with the Holy Spirit and, and angels, and and from that point on, it was like feeling the power of God all the time. Uh, you know, wow. so it was it was amazing. It was so it was a slow but sure, steady transition. Wow. Um, and, and I was like, uh, and I was saying, saying to you beforehand that, uh, I can remember all the details of the first time I got healed back. I can go back. To, so when I first started ministering the power of the Holy Spirit, it was 2008, but I can go back all the way to 1997 when I first experienced supernatural healing. So I never forgot that. So in fact, that's probably one of the reasons why I started realizing I needed to incorporate the healing power of the Holy Spirit into my ministry because I had experienced supernatural healing in 1997. I was going to wor uh, Faith Fellowship World Outreach Ministries in Sayreville, New Jersey, Pastor David DeMola, and going to church there regularly. And and I'm sitting in a, uh, a Sunday school church class where he's teaching. And it's a big ministry, so there's a lot of people teaching, but he was teaching this particular class right. before service. And, uh, and so... You know, he, he's like, I think it was four, so it might have been after, but he uh, he's saying we're going to have a, a healing service this uh, this coming next week at the Sheridan Hotel in Eatontown. And I can remember sitting there thinking, healing service? Like, how do you, how do you plan a healing service? I mean, isn't it God? <laughs> isn't it God who decides when to heal somebody? You know, it's like a typical religious response, you know, yeah. and it's like, so like, that's what I was saying. I was thinking that to myself. So I thought it was kind of arrogant, yeah. really. I, I thought it was kind of arrogant. I was like, come on, what, what are you, you can't, you got to plan a healing service, you know? And so like, uh, so I was like, all right, but you know what, I'm going to go because, because, because at the same time, I had been working a job with a carpenter at the time. I decided, you know, like I wasn't doing it. I was in between jobs. I was like, let me do this. I'm going to see if I can get a carpenter job since Jesus was a carpenter. So <laughs> that was a mistake. So, like, <laughs> I, I get, <laughs> so I get a job and the guy, the guy puts me on a hammer. It's before everybody's using the power things. And so like he puts me on a regular hammer and I'm a lefty. And so like I'm hammering nails all day long. And when my, when I'm getting tired, with my my you know my the arm that I normally use, I, I'm switching to my right hand, and because I'm, it's not a normal grip, it's like it's awkward and not more normal. After uh, after a week or two of doing that, I had excruciating pain in the palm of my hand, and it wasn't going away. The pain, and wow. you know, I had no health insurance. The guy wasn't providing health insurance. It was he was a small operation. He had two employees, me and another guy, and uh, and he was he was uh. He was roughing in houses and you know, wow. building. He was building houses and uh, you know roughing, and uh, and so uh, I go to the healing service. So so I'm sitting there and I hear Pastor Demola say that. And I'm like, all right, well I'm going to go anyway. So I go and and uh, he's got he, he was calling people up on a line and there's a line of people and he's got everybody raising their hands in the air like this, you know, like you know ready to receive. And he comes by down the line and he does. The heel, the heel of his hand, he does this on the forehead, boom. You know, not super hard, but just like a, a point of contact to transfer the power of God. Yeah. And I'm seeing people, I'm seeing people, to, you know, going down, you know, going down, getting slain in the spirit. I was like, I'm not going down. I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. And, and he gets to me, and I, and I felt the power of God. I go right down on my rear end. I felt the power of God go right all through me. And then the power through my body and up through my arm and then out my hand. And when I went out my hand, it took the pain with it. And I was completely healed. And I was like, oh, incredible. I mean, this is this is 1997. So I was a born again Christian for like six years at this point, I guess. And, and uh, I was like, I'm totally amazed. And then, and then uh, completely healed in an instant. And, but then like a couple days later, the pain came back. And, and I just instinctively knew that the devil had stolen my healing. I was like, oh, that dirty devil, he stole my healing. And so we're, I'm sitting in church and Pastor DeMola is saying in the announcements in the beginning of service, he's like, so many people got healed at the Sheridan, we're gonna have another healing service midweek. And I was like, I'm going, I'm getting my healing back. And so I go up front and let me let me back up. 
like I said, with the with that healing that occurred, I feel all the bells and whistles. It was the first time in my life I'm he- feeling all you know I, all the bells and whistles. Right. And, uh, and so uh, I think it was '96 actually. It might have been '96 possibly. And so uh, in 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 or in because because something else occurred in '97. It might have been '97. I can't remember the exact date, but but uh, David Demola can tell me the exact date. And so uh, I go back. I go up front for this for the second healing service and he does the same thing and this time i feel nothing no bells and whistles no warm fuzzy feelings and he goes to me is it gone and i said no and he, and he goes to me he didn't he didn't blink an eye he said to me don't worry it'll go away and i took him at his word that was a powerful mm-hmm. moment i believe right there i just took him at his word and i went and i sat down and as i was when i as i was sitting there within a minute or two the pain left my hand again Praise it was, God. Yeah, and and then it stayed gone. It stayed completely wow. gone and never came wow. back ever again. And the Lord spoke to me and said, "Which healing lasted?" I said, "The second healing." And and the second healing it was did not was not accompanied by any warm fuzzy feelings. Now I feel the power of God all the time, and I in fact, if you watch right. the videos, people will say, "I'll say it all." In fact, I'm I'm putting a video out, a healing video out today, and. And uh, I've said it over. You feel that? You can feel, I feel the power of God. And I, I do it all the time. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm guilty, really, in a way of of uh, of not. I, I got to be more clear. I got to break free of this because you do not need to feel anything to be healed. Right. And when, so the first time I got healed, it, the healing, the, the healing that didn't last had all the warm fuzzy feelings and the healing that did last was not accompanied by any feeling whatsoever. Wow. Wow. You know, and, uh, and so like, I know all those details. Those are all accurate details. But like I said, I cannot tell you, I can, if you ask me to reel off the details of any message that I heard over the years, I couldn't do right. it. So that's the power of a testimony for healing. And so when you're ministering in the power of the Holy spirit and people get touched by the power of God, I'm telling you, they don't ever forget that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very powerful. That's awesome. Well, that's amazing. Um, that I know that uh, that's that's what we try to share to people because you know the you know you know this, but it says these signs will follow those who believe. So it's uh, I don't know how to say that. It's everyone's looking for hope and eternity because God put it in everyone's heart, and I believe that if people, every believer, started to allow the Lord not as a pressure but as a possibility, that maybe this world would start getting saved, coming back to Christ if. You know, they say 98 percent of believers don't share their faith. And I think it's because they don't have power and they're they're timid because the Bible says, right, uh, you haven't received a spirit of fear, but of power. And in in the prior verse was obviously talking about you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit that actually gave you that boldness. And so I think that's uh, what you're saying is like legitimate because the testimony uh, is always a sign that points to the road Jesus that says, hey, you need to turn in here. We've had atheists and I've watched your video, like hundreds of videos you have, which is just remarkable. Like some of the most profane language people, well, like they'll they'll cuss when they're getting healed, but they'll be turned on to Jesus like, oh my gosh, I didn't know he was real, right? And so that's just really phenomenal. Yeah, in fact, when you, uh, that reminds me, you saying that, it's a great, a really great point because it, it it's easy to bring up a testimony that makes that so clear. Uh, and this is an older healing. There's a, a healing video from many years ago where I'm praying for a group of young kid, kids, and, and young kids do that. They'll drop F bombs, you know, like the 17 year olds, you know, 16, 17, 18 year olds. And, uh, you know, so like this kid's dropping, I'm praying for this, he's got scoliosis. I pray for him and he starts dropping F bombs. <laughs> he's like, holy F and F. What the F and F? And all his friends are laughing, you know, and it's like, uh, and this is back several years before I was married. And so I got one of his friends to record me praying for him, <laughs> right? And so like, they're all laughing at his F bombs and, and they're like, really, really? And, you know, and, uh, and so he's healed and, and then, uh, and then I had some, I can remember people making comments like, you know, why is God going to heal him? He's such a cursing, dirty mouth. And I was like, it's like, now if, if God knows everything, don't you, don't you realize that God knew that he'd be dropping F bombs 
after that, you know, it's like God knew that was going to happen, <laughs> you know, and right. God healed him anyway. And, right. you know, and so because because of the ignorance, the kid was young and ignorant. There's a, there's now of course if a, if a Christian who is accountable with the Word of God in them that knows that this is a holy life, if that Christian started dropping f bombs, that would be a different story. You know, because there's a there's such there's a, it's a difference between ignorance and accountability. You know, and so right. this That's kid right. was totally ignorant. Yep. And so I saw the kid a couple months later or something. I, can't, I forgot how long later, but I and I got a, a video a testimony of him telling me he was completely healed. He, we went to the doctor. The doctor was like, "What? You're you're healed. You don't need to get that surgery for scoliosis." And and the whole time he's giving me this testimony, not one f bomb. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I did not have to correct him on the f bomb. He didn't. I didn't say. I didn't say beforehand. Now, now in this, when I when you give this testimony, don't drop no f bombs. <laughs> I, <didn't, laughs> I, like I did nothing like that. I had him shit. I said, "Tell me your testimony," and it, it was like he was like so respectful. Nothing. So like it changed him. The healing, the power of God changed him without me even telling him. You know, so uh, in fact, in fact, I have a, a recent testimony because I I also have a tendency to uh, like you know you, you you I believe we're supposed to correct people, but we got to be careful co who we're correcting, right? And how we're correcting? Like I correct people when I know they know better, and yeah. I can I feel like they're they're in rebellion, but nevertheless. I must have been missing the mark on several occasions because I had a dream one night where Jesus, where he, he appeared to me as a lion and he, he's a, uh, he's a lion and he's sitting, he's sitting on, laying on the ground, facing away from me. I'm behind him with some of his cubs, little baby lion cubs. Wow. And they're, they're all playing with me on the ground outside. And one of them, is sitting back like a like a human, sitting back and around like a human, and you can see all this. Well, I saw you know all this cute, you know, like kind of light colored fur, you know, to, to brown brown fur, really wow. cute. And it's got like these little white things all in its fur, and I'm picking out the little white things, right? I'm picking them out of his fur, and then all of a sudden, Jesus, the lion, puts his his paw back and pulls the baby cub towards him and then i heard him say bring them to me tom and i'll clean them up <laughs> wow that is awesome wow <laughs> the very powerful correcting dream it was a it was a loving rebuke and but I, and, but i loved it because it was a real encounter with the lord and i heard him say that clearly to me Wow. <laughs> so, like, so, like, so, like, I've had to be careful to be kept, watch out to, that I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to bring correction and teach, but be careful that you're correcting the right ones in the right way, whatever, and, and just, but mostly bring them to him and then he'll correct them. Awesome. That's amazing. So, you know, I'm going back to, you know, you had that healing and stuff when you got healed. I just had, I heard that, but what, where is the transition? from where you got healed to where you, like I know you said you started sharing your faith to where healing started happening. And then I guess with that, when it started happening, did you start to get, I'm not, it sounds bad, but like addicted to seeing God heal people? Did like, did you start to go more that you, after you saw a breakthrough or did it just not change the frequency of when you went or did it encourage you to go more? I, I don't know if you could answer that. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. It definitely encouraged me more. Um, <laughs> Like, just like, I'm like this, I got this like, uh, personality of like, you know, full speed or, or nothing, you know? So like, so like, uh, I get healed and I, and I'm, I'm, it's, it's like I said, either 96 or 97 and Bassett Demola would know the date. I can go to faith fellowship and say, Hey, what's the date of that healing service? <laughs> and, uh, and so like. But in 1997, in the summer of 1997, I was working for a company on the road and living in Winchester, Virginia, and I was going to Winchester Assembly of God. And the I didn't know, you know, I wasn't really like I was walking with the Lord, but I wasn't like really in tune with what was going on in the body of Christ in an overall way. 
And, uh, but the leadership had just come back from the Brownsville revival, which was a powerful revival that started on, on Father's Day, 1995, wow. and went yeah. for like five years in, in Brownsville, in the uh, Brownsville Assembly of God in, was it Pensacola? Pensacola, Florida? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, they had come back from that revival and they were going through the church laying hands on everybody during the church service. And one of the, one of the leaders was laying, laid hands on me and quoted Isaiah, uh, setting captives free from dungeons of darkness, that, that scripture verse. And, uh, and I didn't feel anything, but, uh, uh, you know, the next day, Greg, I found myself out ministering healing to people. <laughs> wow. I was like, yeah, I was like, I was like, how did that happen? I, like the next day, I don't know. It's like the, it was a weirdest thing. It's like the next day I was in a laundromat and, and I found myself ministering healing to some girl. This girl starts weeping when I'm praying for her. She starts weeping and she gets healed. And I'm like, it's the weirdest thing. I just started healing people everywhere I was going and it lasted. So I got impartation from that Brownsville revival and, and, wow. and it lasted for a number of months. So I actually had a healing ministry back in 1997, but I didn't, I wasn't pursuing healing as a ministry of my own. I wasn't studying healing scriptures in uh, and so like after a few months, two, three months, whatever, however long it was, I don't remember, I faded away or, or rather I faded away. Okay. And, and I look back and I realized it was because I didn't make it my own. You know, it's like when you when you uh, when when you're experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit and you see it in the Word of God and you know you have that power in you, you have to make it your own. Come you on, you can't go on the coattails of somebody else. You've got to make it your own. All right, right? and because uh, and I've experienced this many times where people would say to me, and this has this is no offense to other ministries, but you know, because I, because I'm sure there's other ministries that can give the same testimonies where right. I've had people say to me over the years, I went to this particular seminar or training thing, and I was seeing the power of God flowing on the streets with this minister, and then when I got home, there was nothing. Going, I I start, and stopped. I wasn't getting any results. I said that's because. The, the minister who operates in the power of the Holy Spirit, that he was creating an atmosphere of faith from his faith. And that's what you were, you were working out of that. And wow. that's, that's how people learn. You, you, people learn by working through the at, the faith atmosphere of the one who's operating that way, you know, and, and so like, so like, but you've got to make it your own after, you know, if you're experiencing that. So I never did that. And then, and then a number of years later, back, I guess, back it's 2002, 2003, or even earlier, maybe 2002, 2001 even, I started getting more serious with sharing my faith. And then, and, and then 2006, I started praying for, you know, praying for more people to get healed, still not seeing results. And then I started asking the Lord for, to use me in healing. And then I, I asked the Lord solidly for, you know, then, then to, maybe 2000, 2008 comes around, and at that point, I was already solidly asking the Lord constantly, use me in healing, use me in healing. I see this in your word. It's in your word. I've read this. I've read the scriptures. I know it's right there. I've prayed for many people. I tell people you heal, use me in healing. I was spending a lot of time in my bedroom worshiping the Lord. I had worship music on, spending a lot of time doing that. And then one night I have a supernatural experience where I'm sleeping in and in the middle of the night, I'm sleeping on my stomach with my arms down to my sides and the palms of my hands up in the air. And I don't usually sleep like that. I usually sleep on my side. And but I, you know, I guess I was just sound asleep, exhausted. And and I felt two hands. All of a sudden, two hands grabbed both of my hands simultaneously. And as soon as I felt that, because it felt like two human hands grabbing my hands. Wow. As soon as I, as soon as I started feeling that, Greg, I, the Lord started showing me in my mind's eye what was happening. And I saw in my mind's eye something like hot putty. I can feel, I just felt the power of God. That's yeah, me too. Me too. I, I, I felt some, like, something like hot putty being pressed down into the palms of both of my hands. And, and in fact, right now, for anybody listening right now, I, I released that. I release that in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, come in power upon everyone watching this right now. Release that anointing. That was an anointing. 
an anointing, an anointing, let it spread like wildfire, wildfire throughout the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them, Holy Spirit, with that anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Fire, fire, fire on those watching in the name of Jesus Christ. Be stirred up and be moved to action in Jesus' name and lay hands on people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And wow. angels go with them. Angels go with them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is time for the church to arise to put down this evil attack of Satan in the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus, you, uh, Jesus, you are king. You have already done it. It is finished. And Satan, you are a wicked liar. You are defeated, Satan. You are done. You're going down in this evil attack. And the, the church of God is arising. And great glory is going to be displayed yes, through the body of Christ throughout the entire world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it, Holy Spirit. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're amazing. That's Woo. awesome. I felt God. As soon as you started saying hot putty, I felt yes. the Lord just come on me as soon as you said that. And I believe other like there's people, I don't know if you can see some of the comments I'm posting on yes, there, but right. people are receiving that too. And it's just, uh, it's kind of funny. This is, this has been a recent thing. And I just, I don't know if uh, I'm a, I don't know if I can have you pray one more time because that was, I just feel God in this. Yeah. Glory to God. Seriously. There's a lady, um, Phoebe, she's on here too. And she started, uh, the other day she was on a, uh, doing a, a, a live and her hands all of a sudden got hot and she's like, yeah, is that normal? Yeah. right. And I'm like, that's healing. And then a guy that was Hogwild Center. I don't know if he's watching. He's awesome, but he's been he's been seeing visions and dreams. But now his hands are getting hot, and people are getting healed. And so yeah, this is Lord, that's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Woo uh -huh. So Lord, more of that Holy Spirit, more of that. You're doing this. It. This is the time. The devil thinks he's got us rocking and reeling. No way, Satan. You're about to get blasted. <laughs> You're going to get smacked upside the head, Satan. So more of that Holy Spirit, more of that fire, Holy Ghost, fire, Holy Ghost, fire all over the body of Christ. Start up. May the saints of God arise. And <laughs> the whole world is going to be shocked. They're going to be like, what is this? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Lord, save them. Lord Jesus so go out there, Lord, with the, bring bring that sickle and reap the harvest, Lord Jesus, with your mighty power. Hallelujah. And, and in that testimony, the, so, the, so the power of God, uh, and it was an anointing put in my hands, Ooh. and I, I shook my hands loose because I was shocked. I, I woke up, I turned on my, over on my back, and I said, I said, just to make sure that was angels, because I felt like angels were involved. I said, just to make sure that was angels, now do that to my feet, but this time don't hold my feet. And within five or six seconds, without the sensation of my feet being held, my feet started burning hot. And there's a, there's a meaning to that, because blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. Blessed on the mountains, right? The, the, so right now, that Holy Ghost fire in your feet also, it's a do gospel to go and do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can actually tap, I've done it many times, you can tap people with your foot and they get healed. You, Glory to God, more of that Holy Spirit, more of that Holy Spirit, more of that Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. The kingdom is not in word, but in power. Galatians 4.20, the kingdom is not in word, but in power, power release, power release, power release. In Jesus' mighty name, power release. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless them, Holy Spirit, and use them mightily. Your, the, the, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. <laughs> hallelujah. Okay, we're done here. Everybody have a nice day. <laughs> I gotta take my socks off because my feet are starting to sweat. <laughs> That's awesome! Come on! Woo! <laughs> wow! That, <laughs> see, I promise you, there's more inside of you, Tom, uh, uh, Tom than I, I think most people know. I know you're not a traditional ministry guy, but I promise you, there's just so much power. Like, I promise you, the Lord, even when I was doing this, He just said, "Watch His videos, and you're going to receive that anointing." 
And so I watched, I started watching and catching it. And I promise you people ever since then, it's been like, you know, whatever, seven or eight out of 10 people, like people are getting healed all over the place. It's crazy. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you know, Greg, that right. makes a great point. What you said makes a great point because you know what? I've seen, I've had hundreds of people over the years tell me, uh, I just watched the videos and mimicked you and it worked, which proves that what does Tom Fisher have to do with this? I, I, I say to people, I say to people all the time, but, but, you know, people say, how did that, how'd you do that? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. A, I'm not the healer, right? That's, that's right. What, and that's Galatians 2.20. Wait, I, earlier I said Galatians 4.20. It's, it's 1 Corinthians 4.20. Correct myself. Galatians 2.20 says, I no longer live because of Zimbi, right? <laughs> it's, so like, it's, like, it's like, I don't know how it works. It's Jesus doing his work through the believer. <laughs> I couldn't heal a headache on a horse fly because I don't know how to do that. It's like, you know, the hard hearted people say, why don't you heal this person? It's like, I, 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 I'm not the healer. It's like, and I'm, that's not an excuse, right? It's not an excuse. I just said, I just said, you can't tell me to go heal people. I just go out and I, 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 I try my best to follow leading the Holy Spirit and pray for people that want healing or yeah. people that I see the look humble. You know, just go from there, right? That's right. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Wow. Okay, so that started. That that was a prolific experience. So you getting your hands with uh, Holy Ghost putty, and then your feet getting touched by angels. That's incredible. Um, that's really just like an awe story. I'm sorry. I'm kind of like awestruck. Like God, I didn't. I've never heard this. This is so powerful. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've given a testimony on a, a few videos many years ago, but it's like this close to 800 videos. So you'd have to watch a lot of old videos to find that testimony. I've, I've watched <laughs> about 300, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's still a lot. I've had people tell me I watch all your videos. Like, I don't think so. You, you know, you'd be watching them non 800. It's like you'd have to watch nonstop for like a two, three months, whatever. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember like I felt to surround myself with a culture of healing. And so that's what, you know, how you have to reprogram your mind, right? Normality becomes something you expect. And so that's what the Lord told me about culture. So I started to surround myself with like your videos and some of Pete Cabrera's or whatever, but mostly it was yours. And I'd watch them literally like eight hours a day. You wouldn't wow. believe this for like a month and a half. Literally, I watched like, oh, I watched them. I think there was. Eight years ago, there was only 250, and I think I watched them three or four times a piece um, just wow. to like program my brain. I'm not kidding. I and feel terrible. I feel I feel terrible that this is actually the first time we're actually like you know the last week first time we're actually communicating. Besides besides the back and forth comments yeah. on on social media, it's the first time. So I feel right. terrible. It's been like so uh, been a blessing to me actually. You know, watching all of them and then sharing with people. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just think it's instrumental and I believe that it's like a hidden gift because, you know, I know that there's a lot of powerful things, but there hasn't been one person who's been healed who refused the gospel for me. I've had atheists like an atheist, uh, my atheist neighbor, she eventually got healed, but she even let me pray because she said, I, I don't believe in that. And I said, well, then it shouldn't matter if I do pray for you. She was like, good point. Right. And so she got healed and she stopped being an atheist. And then four years later, she got saved after Jesus shows up in her apartment or her, her living room or wh whatever apartment. And so I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And so like nobody, nobody says, I don't want to hear the gospel after they get healed. It's right, exactly. It, was like, it, it would make no sense to say, oh, yes, I'm healed, but I don't care about anything you have to say. It makes no sense. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you everything. You know, and, and uh, you, you know, Greg, that's awesome about the atheist because like, because uh, like some a when atheists are opposing the gospel, they don't get healed. But but if an atheist says you can pray for me, that right there is the faith that they're exercising by them yeah. saying yes, you can pray. That's all it takes is that little bit of faith that they're exercising to get healed. Yep, you know? I, I actually felt that was the Lord. It's funny you say that. I I use that in our training because I don't a lot of and this is I'm glad you brought this up, but a lot of old old believers or religious sorry ways of thinking were like hey brother do you have faith to be healed to an atheist or to sinners 
And they're so like the church is so I'm just going to be real screwed up Jesus into the world's mindset. They don't think there's any such thing as power. They've heard the word pray before, but Muslims pray, Hindus pray, everyone prays, but nothing gets answered. And a lot of times, just to be honest, Christians supposedly pray, but I don't think they have a right revelation of Jesus. So when you say pray, right, then they're like, oh, I don't want you to pray for me. Right. So it's kind of like you can't say, do you have faith, brother? You have to say like, hey, do you want it? And it's right, serious. exactly. You got to use their language, like, like in fact, oh, I'm like, I'm, it's like I'm not even really praying for people. I'm, I'm speak, I'm declaring, I'm declaring things. But I, I say to people, do you want me to pray for you? Because that's a language they understand. Yeah. You know, but I'm not. I don't. I don't lay hands on somebody and say, "Oh God, please heal this person." You know, it's like I'm. You know, you're speaking with authority. You're, you're speaking to the mountain. Right? You know, so you're really declaring things. Right. You know, in, in this in the spirit realm over that person. So, you know, getting back to uh, you say that, like, you know, you, you know, you got a lot. You, it helps you a lot watching the videos and all. I can, you know, it's like I, none of us can really take credit. We're, you know, the only credit we can have is, you know, is, the you know, we're, we were obedient to the Lord. Right. Because like this, I could say I could say, well, that's I'm so grateful that that Greg, that I helped you. But like, you know, I can say, uh Thank Todd White <laughs> because, like, I, I, I saw Todd White make videos. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like I was out ministering healing. I started ministering healing in the late summer of 2008, and I'm ministering healing by myself on the streets for a year and a half, uh, and, and nobody's teaching me. The Holy Spirit's teaching me. I don't, I don't know anybody. You no, know, the only people I knew were the big names: Benny Hinn, Reinhard Bonnke, Kenneth Hagen. But you can't get near those guys. You can't just call them up and say, "Can you tell me?" You know. So like, it's like I'm out there doing this by myself. The holy, I'm learning from hit and miss. You know. Actually, after after I, I experienced, everybody's feeling the power of God. <laughs> there were, you know, you know, there were people that didn't get maybe didn't get healed. I mean, you know, there's tons of people that I'd never seen again after that, but everybody was feeling it because there was an anointing put in me on that, you know? And so like, so like, uh, I, I'm doing this for a year and a half. And then I, I decide, you know, let me go on YouTube, see if anybody else is doing this. You know, I see Todd White. I'm like, I had no clue who Todd White is. So I see Todd White doing healing videos. I'm like, oh, that's, a, this is a great idea. Make, <laughs> make, make videos of this, a great idea. You know, and so like, so I'm praying. I say, Lord, give me, give me an imaginative way to make these healing videos by myself. Because I, I don't have time to find a cameraman and schedule with that person. All right, can we go out this day? You know, will you battle right. these out? Right. And so, right. and so I prayed that, and I'm telling you, Greg, immediately I heard in my spirit the Lord say to me, "Just go up to young people and get them involved." And I knew what that meant, and so. And so I got this Sony camcorder. If you see the early videos, you can, you know, you might see that. And, uh, and I go up to young people. I'm driving around, and I see maybe two or three young kids hanging out on the corner of a supermarket somewhere, you know, outside. And uh, I get, I park. I walk up to them, and as I'm walking up to them, I'm turning my camera on record, and I say to them as I'm approaching, I'm looking at my camera and looking at them, and, and I'm saying, "Hey, hey, fellas, can you guys do me a favor and record me on my camera?" And and I've got their attention because they see uh, they they hear me saying this and they see me with a camera in my hand with me pushing buttons and, and before they even give me a yes or no I'm already handing it to one of them. Wow! <laughs> because, wow! Because I'm not taking no for an answer, right? I'm like, can you? What are you guys? Uh, you know, because I'm doing it in a nice way. I'm not. I'm 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 approaching people like as if I already know them. Right. It's like I'm over to your friend. And so that's the posture I'm putting forth, you know. So every one of them are saying, yes, they received me because I'm like, I got this posture on me like I'm your friend. And so so I'm like, hey, fellas, can you do me a favor? Record me on this camera. And, and, and I'm handing it out. And one of them is like, yeah, sure. In the taking it. What are you going to do? And, I'm, and, and at this point, the kids got the camera. And I'm like, well, I'm a minister. I, I pray for people and I get it on I get it on video. I'm gonna get evidence of it. And so I pray for people to get healed instantly in the name of Jesus. So w which one of you guys has pain anywhere? And like so I'm controlling the whole situation because none of them had the script. None of them woke up that day saying, Oh, oh well, today's the day I get approached by a crazy healing minister. 
So none of them had the script. So I have to control the whole situation. So I'm like, wow. this is what I do. Do any of you guys need healing? Who's needs healing? I don't. I don't leave, and I don't let any uh, uncomfortable time lapses of silence. I don't allow that to happen because when you do that, they're like, okay, see ya. You know, it's like mm -hmm. so. Like I'm like, who? Who do you see? You got you got healing. What, you got something? There's something wrong. You like you know when, when I'm when you're dealing with 17 and 18 year olds, you get a lot of funny things going on too. So one of them might say, yeah, yeah, uh, his face is hurting me. You know, to, you know, to one of his friends is, yeah, his face is hurting me. You know, it's like you get a lot of that stuff. And so like, <laughs> so you're laughing along with them because you're on the same level as them. So you're laughing. <laughs> and so like, and I said, like, yeah, I got pain. And, this, and then, and often I would give the camera to the kid that had the pain. So it must have been like a word of knowledge somehow. So I'd say, so it's like, oh, here, I'll just take the camera. Say, oh, give, give me that. You, you, you hold this. So give it to, take it from him and hold it. And give it to his friend. I said, now, here, now, keep us in the, keep us in the window. Keep me in the window. They had a little mirror. And I'll say, now, now, come on over here. What's, what's wrong? How long have you had that pain? And no, no uncom uncomfortable lapses of time. No silences. And I'm, I'm controlling the whole situation without being a jerk, right? Yeah. And then and they're like, yeah, well, this and then and the pay and boom, they get healed, and then I get it on video. And so that that's how it went with all those videos, years and years and years. Wow. Uh, year after year, video after video, week in, week out, every single week for eight years, never been a lapse. And uh, and and because I saw Todd White doing it. <laughs> wow. So, wow. So uh, yeah, and so like and so that that's how the whole ministry got started. And I was in over those years, I would be going to a church, you know, this church actually. I went to a number of churches over that ten year time period. And uh, but it was not the church. No offense to the church I was going to, but it wasn't the church I was going to. It was my decision to believe what the Bible said, and and and, and me deciding to go out and start doing it. And, you know, I didn't ask for permission. You know, when Paul got blasted by the power of God, he, it says it right there in in the Book of Acts. He didn't ask anybody's permission. <laughs> he 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 immediately started preaching the gospel. Right. Right. <laughs> and so like. Yes, yeah, so that's what I did, and uh, and so like it's and so it's worked. Uh, it's worked beautifully from day one, you wow. know. And 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 then uh, and then and then people. I, and then I decided to put a, a PayPal donate button on a YouTube channel, and so because I never had a church sending me out. There was never a church that sent me out, so to speak. You know, that was financially backing me. You know, so like I mowed lawns for a living. I, I wasn't like, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a scholar. I didn't go to seminary. I, I mowed lawns. I cut grass for a living for 25 years of my life. All right. And then this happened to me. And so I was mowing lawns while I was doing this. And then I made the transition from mowing lawns into doing this. And God did all sorts of money miracles for me in the beginning to carry me through that transition until there were enough people seeing the videos and supporting the work. And so so God's been faithful. I've never missed a meal, never never been uh, homeless or not have a roof on my head. He always paid my bills on time. I, I have not been late on a bill for well over 10 years. My credit score is close to 800. Wow. Not that that matters because the, because the credit system is this world's corrupt system. I could care less. Right. You know, right. You know uh, God doesn't want us being in debt, even though I do have car debt. I have car loan debt and, uh, and another uh, – I have a small travel trailer debt I wish I – both of them were mistakes. <laughs> you know, I said I shouldn't have done that, but nevertheless, nevertheless, I still pay all my bills on time. You know, so anyway, I can go on and on and on. Yeah. About, you know, the, how all of this has worked out and how God has been there faithfully helping or doing it all, actually. Amen. You there? I think I lost you. I just lost Greg. Um, I'm not sure if I'm still being heard by people or not. I'm sure he'll be back soon. This happens uh, after a certain amount of time. This happens where the person there he is. You're back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Maybe the devil didn't like that, or you know whatever. So. I don't know what happened. I, I was actually just uh, putting in your your YouTube channel, and all of a sudden, you just everything shut down for two seconds, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> so. uh, all right, that's all right. I kept on talking anyway because I saw it's you. It's good. It's good. So, anyway, you better ask me a question because I'll go on. I'll just keep on going on, Greg. If you no, 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 you're good. Okay, so that that was awesome. That was exactly okay. So what? You know, say you're you're the trainer who trains. You're. I'm not saying you're a professional, but obviously, 
you've broken through god's using you you've got like not a system you have the savior but he's working um so what is your kind of advice to an every how do we begin as an everyday believer how do, how would you tell because i believe honestly that every believer would go if they know they could go and if we had some maybe steps for them to begin with like a go-to how do i step across the room what do i say what's the easiest thing to expect how to ex how to deal with rejection you know we pray for them they don't get healed do i shut down do i say god didn't or, or do i just forget it and keep going like would you mind trying to fill in the blanks a little bit absolutely and uh and now it's so it might be a wee bit unfair for people that don't have the same kind of personality because i'm like rough around the edges like right. um, a big mouth. I've never. I've always been bold. <laughs> My Christianity didn't make me bold. I've always been bold, you right. know. And so, like, uh, uh, you, so you you can't like you. When I first started, it's like like I, I'm not the type of person that uh, I've been rejected plenty of times in my life. It doesn't it doesn't affect me. Uh, I'm I'm not quick. Uh, and and let me go at this from a certain uh, theological perspective about a doctrinal belief system. I am not quick to think that I failed if somebody doesn't get healed it, because I'm always been, and some people might think that's kind of like, you know, arrogant, but I don't care. It's like, I am not quick to think I failed. And so when, when I've had people reject me over the years or something seemingly didn't happen, I don't right. go away. Like, <laughs> 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 you know, I go away. So I would often go away thinking, that, that, that dummy needs to repent." <laughs> <laughs> I just tell it like it is, man. It's like I'm telling. It's like those people are hard-hearted, man. They need to repent. You know, I, I'd I'd find reasons why they didn't receive. <laughs> you know, it's like so like it's like I'm just not going to go away with my tail between my legs, thinking, "Oh, I don't have to. I can't, it's not happening no more. I'm done. That's it." I'm just right. it's just not the way I am. So like, right. so like that that gives you thick thick skin. You know, you got to have thick skin where like so you quickly bounce back. And and I I'm believe that I That's believe awesome. that I can back that up scripturally too, Greg. Right. It's like. Because, like, I, I see in Scripture that uh, there's a marriage of faith. Because I've heard ministers, and I, and and if anybody has watched my videos, I don't, I don't point out names. I don't like picking on people by name. You know, it's like, it's like there are definitely ministers I disagree with some of the things they're teaching, and sometimes I get pretty darn close to making it clear as to who it is. <laughs> but I don't, <laughs> I don't point out names. No, but it's like I can't stand hyper grace, and I'm and I'm sure people have heard me say that many times, and 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 I don't like I don't like this teaching that if I minister to somebody and nothing happens, I failed. I can't stand that because I see in Scripture where Jesus said, "Your faith has made you well." All right, and and then and say, and then he's saying about the the centurion who's not even Israel. He's saying. I tell you, I have not even found anybody in all of Israel with such great faith. You know, and it's like they right. all must have been like, oh, so embarrassed because like this not this this Gentile had great faith and none of them did. You know, so like it's like I'm not quick to think that way that that I failed. I see a marriage of faith. I release faith, and the person that needs to get healed releases faith. And I've said this over and over again with with when when you're dealing with like if I'm dealing with somebody that's ignorant that doesn't have the word of God in them and they get healed, I'll admit I, I fail, right? Because, right? because the easiest people to get healed are ignorant unbelievers that are nice people. Like, like they don't, they're not opposing the gospel. They're just, they're ignorant and they're nice. And so they're very easy to get healed, young people like that. And because, because Jesus used healing as an evangelistic tool. He didn't just... He didn't just heal people because it's in his nature to heal. I agree he heals people because it's in his nature to heal. I agree with that. But he used healing as an evangelistic tool. He said, if you don't believe the words that I say to you, at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. And so right. he was getting people's attention by healing them. All right. And so, and then he even said to the people, he said, uh, Woe to what you know. Woe to you, Corazon, and whatever. 
if the miracles that were performed in you were performed in Tyre and Sidon, you know, and the same thing with Capernaum, Capernaum, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. You know, you're, you think you're going up to heaven? No, you're going down to hell. Right. You, you, you didn't repent after seeing the miracles. And so the miracles are an evangelistic tool to get somebody's attention. You know, it's so like the problem I've had with, with not getting something done is with somebody who knows better. Religious Christians are the hardest people in the world to get healed. Christians who have the word of God in them and reject the healing power of the Holy Spirit, they are the most difficult person on the planet to get healed. And it's like, and it's like I walk away thinking, you dummy. <laughs> you better soften your hard heart because you are wrong, flat wrong. And then I walk away thinking, what? I knew I shouldn't have engaged. I, I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have engaged that person. You know, yeah. that's, I walk away thinking that, you know, and so like, uh, and so without a doubt, I've seen that many times. And so, and then I, I've come to the point where, I, and when I say dummy, I'm not, you know, don't think I'm being belligerent. The word dummy has, I've been using it on Facebook a lot lately too, because of all the stupid stuff going on. The word dummy can mean mannequin, you know, like a mannequin, like something, something that doesn't talk, that doesn't think, has no brain, doesn't think, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's somebody that doesn't engage. We're, if you call yourself a Christian and you're not out sharing the gospel with people, you're a dummy. Because because you, because the word of God says, you, uh, you say you have faith, I will show you my faith by what I do. So right. you're on the wrong road if you have the gospel truth in you and you're not sharing with people. You're a dummy. You know? so like, <laughs> you're awesome. You know, so like, yeah, so like, I, I'm like, I'll, I'll think that way. And it's like, I'm not, I don't think I'm being belligerent. It's like, man, wake up. Right. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Cause I mean, I know you too, like you're, you're originally from North. So you just say it as you, you say it like, so we're in the South and people don't say the truth. <laughs> um, they're like, Oh, no big deal. Everything's awesome. Even though I hate you, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm glad you just say it um, just as it is. That's awesome. Right. So what's the step that you would say like, Okay, so honestly, 98% of people don't share their faith. So we're probably talking to, say if there's, say, say there's going to be 300 people that watch this, right? Or whatever, 350 people, I don't know, something like that. Um, so we're talking to people like that, say 98% of those who aren't sharing their faith. What would you say? What's your first step? How would they like, I know that just go, right? Because that's what I, I say. I just go. I'm kind of like a loud person. So I'm, I'm probably more in your personality where... Right. I just really don't care. I just, I would rather do it and screw up than not do it. Right. Exactly. That's it. And, and so Greg, you're making a great point. So what you do is leave the results up to Jesus. I said it earlier. I don't know how to, I couldn't heal a headache on a horse fly. We, we go, go out there. Don't put pressure on yourself. Leave the results up to the Lord. It's like, you're not the one who's healing. It, the, I can show you plenty of scripture verses that support that. It's like, right. you know, like I said, Galatians 2.20, that's probably the main one. You no longer live. It's like Christ lives in you. He's doing his work through you. So leave the results up to the Lord. And and if you're not, and then if you're, if you're praying for a lot of people and you're not getting results, then you can't say it doesn't work. You need to adjust and start thinking, all right, what am I doing wrong? You need to humble yourself. Maybe I need to like start, uh, you know, you, you have, I cannot tell you how many people I would say, now do this, and then and then they start praying. Oh God, please heal that person. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't. Say, that's not how I told you to do it. I said, I said, just speak to it, lay hands, and speak to the issue. And then, but they don't listen, and they still lay hands. Lord, Lord, you know, putting their head down, closing their eyes. Lord, we thank you, we thank you. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that prayer, but there's a right. context for that prayer, you know. And it's not necessarily this context. And so if the person gets healed, it's because that person ministering is a very humble person. And the person that needs healing is a humble person that's ready to receive, you know. But but you're going to get consistent results if you do it the right way. Like if you, like for instance, if they put you in the, in the army, they're going to give you a gun. You're not going to like close your eyes and just start shooting. <laughs> right? right. You're, gonna, you're gonna aim at the target with your eyes open. And so it's Come the on. same thing with this in your divine police officer. So you're taking, you have the authority, you're taking, in fact, authority is a big thing. Satan has been trying to 
shut the body of Christ up. What do you think the mask thing is? The mask thing is is shut up. I don't I don't want to hear from you, Christian. Shut up. And so that's what the mask thing is. Like, and it's I'm like, no, you shut up, Satan. I haven't worn a mask. I wore it once only because I wanted to go into Trader Joe's. <laughs> it's a great store. Right? It's a really good store. I love the people in Trader Joe's. They're always so nice. You know, it's like, but it's like I'm not wearing that stupid mask. It's like I tell people, it's like, look. In fact, I was in Lowe's. Hava and I were in Lowe's a couple of weeks ago, and we're getting uh, a key key made, a key duplicated. And the the woman, she's like kind of rough around the edges, also. And it turns out she's from New Jersey as well. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> and uh, I'm talking to her about things, and then some guy, a guy comes over that works for Lowe's that was just very liberal. And I don't care I, if I want to make this political, I will. I don't, I, my church, the Carbo Box Church, is not a 501c3. I'm not in contract with the government. I'll talk as much as I want about politics. If you don't right. like it, too bad. Right? right. This guy right. comes over very liberal, and he's got his mask. I, I, you know, she got the, You know, they have to wear their mask because that's policy. You know, but but he's like, he said some kind of snarky remark, and I was like, and, and I forgot exactly what I said, but it led into a a barrage of me preaching and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, preaching against the stupidity of the mask. And I was saying, I was saying to him, I say, I say, look it, I don't hold you responsible for my health. It's like, you know, you're wearing a mask. You're, you're saying it's, it's because you're thinking about me. What a, first of all, what a bunch of rubbish because most people are selfish. They're not thinking about the other person. They're afraid because they don't want to get it. All right. right. So, so I'm saying to him, I don't hold you responsible for my health, buddy. So I don't care if you're wearing a dumb mask or not. And and if and if the mask is helping you, why do you care if I'm not wearing one? Right? right. So like I can cover both sides of that argument. You know, so like he had nothing to say about it. And then uh and then I was just like after preaching for a couple of minutes, like we got our keys and walk away. But <laughs> but like <laughs> But it was like, man, it's like, I'm just not going to like beat her. You know, it's like we're living in a time where the devil is trying to intimidate Christians left and right. So get boldness. So it says in Acts, Lord, Lord, give us boldness. What's the scripture verse? Give us bold and make us bold. Stretch forth your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs in the right. name of your holy servant, Jesus. Read that scripture over and over. Get, get that, do a word search for the word boldness. Find that scripture verse and other Act scripture verses and, and then read the, I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit saying this. Read those scripture verses over and over and ask the Lord for boldness, boldness, every day, boldness, boldness, boldness. Because it's like he said, he said, like the unjust judge, oh, I'm sick and tired of this woman coming to me asking for justice. I'm going to give her justice because she's going to wear me out with her coming and complaining. So you do the same thing with the Lord. Give me boldness. Give right. me boldness. Give me boldness. No, non-stop because you're not going to wear the Lord out. It's like you're. Believe me, if you think you're going to wear the Lord out, you don't understand God. It's like yep. it, you know. And so like, and so you got to keep on doing that, and then just go out and start doing. You got you got to have the mindset that this is obedience. It's like you going out and ministering to people is obedience. It's not a matter of you getting results. It's a matter of you obeying the Lord because he right. said in the Great Commission, right. he said the apostles teach the disciples to obey everything I have commanded you. That's All right. right. So where are the right. disciples? And so those apostles, that, that first century, that first church apostles Taught, taught disciples, and then those disciples taught disciples, and it came all the way down to us. And so we're to learn how to minister healing, all right? Yes. So when I got when I first got saved back in 19, August 19th, 1991, I believed that I received the Holy Spirit, but the minister didn't know healing, and so he didn't. He only taught me what he knew. I had power. You got to learn about the power that's in you. Jesus said, you, you know, everybody focuses on the Holy Spirit. Did you speak in tongues? You know, religious Christians. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that tongues is wrong. You need to speak in tongues. But re all religious Christians that don't get results healing say that did, did you speak in tongues, right? You no, know, Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's right. Power. power. Right? So it's like that power means more than just tongues. And so so I believe that I received power, but you've got to be taught what you've received. Why do you think that's called something called the school of the prophets? All right. 
to you have, you have to be taught what you received. And so when I started making videos, I knew that the demonstration would be the best teacher. You know, I can mm -hmm. teach you scripture verses, but demonstration is the best teacher. That's right. Watch somebody else do it and listen to the scripture verses that that person might be combining with the situation, blah, blah, blah. I can feel the power of God. It's awesome. It, and so, so Holy Spirit, do it. Come in power upon anyone watching that feels timid. I rebuke the spirit of timidity. God has not given you a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. You unclean spirit of timidity. It's a demon. You unclean right. spirit of timidity. Get out in Jesus' that's name. Right. You know what? That's a there's a revelation that I hit. Yeah, that's a spirit. Right. <laughs> it's, right. it's a it's a demon. You spirit of timidity. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ. You need deliverance <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out. Get right. out, spirit of timidity right. and boldness. Right. Fill that believer in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God's in you. You just got to believe it. Now go awesome. do it. In Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, that's awesome. Lord. That awesome. Praise God. Yeah, amen. I think, I think that's good. So you're, that's that's what you just kind of, we just kind of laid out was your message, right? Go preach the gospel. It's obedience. And then, you know, God will confirm that with signs following. But don't worry, like you said, about measuring yourself as you go, right? Right. In fact, there's a scripture verse. I forgot the, the address. I have a tendency to not remember addresses because I don't care. I've read the Bible over and over for years. I know the Bible when I hear it. If I can't get the address, I'll just look it up. But right. I know it when I hear it. There's a scripture where Peter says, we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So he gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. And so, and so, and so you might want to, you might say, all right, well, but, but, you know, it comes at salvation. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, you're still obeying, you know, the Lord, the Lord is reaching out to you. You're hearing the gospel message, the gospel of your salvation, and you're obeying that gospel by saying right. yes. And then you're obeying the, the command to be baptized and then you get baptized. All right. And so, right. so, it's, it's, so he gives his Holy Spirit to those who obey him. And then, and then if you didn't get baptized and receive the Holy Spirit when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not the end of the world, but get baptized in water and then and then obey him. I mean, walk uprightly before him. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've been on the phone with believers that are, that are struggling. The enemy's eating their lunch, and it's because they're looking at pornography or committing some other sin. It's like, forget it. If you no. think God is going to accept your practicing a sin, that's like you trying to bust through a cement wall with your head. You're not going to break the wall. You're going to break your head. There you go. Acts 532. You're right. Thank you. You're going to break your head. You're not going to break the wall. Trying to change God's, uh, what he says on that. No, you need to obey. You need to repent of sin. That's it. And then and then go out and do it. And then obey. Go out and start sharing the gospel with people and leave the results up to God. And that takes the pressure off of you. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Well, praise God, Tom. I think that's. Uh, I think we we covered it. Unless you feel like you you got something, but uh, that was supernatural. Like the impartation came, the explanation came, and now the charge came to go and obey the Lord. I thought that was a full meal deal right there. So, Amen. Thank uh, you. Dave. I appreciate you. Thank you for. Uh, I don't. I don't know if there's. Would you have anything else that you want to? You would just say or commend people to do or or, or work. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I bless your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Your ministry will continue to prosper. You will be effective. You will, will, you will teach people how to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. You will lead lost souls to Jesus. The Lord will deliver you from all of Satan's evil schemes. He'll keep you safe. There's plenty of scripture verses that defend that and say that. So I declare that for you, Greg, and your whole family, and also for everybody listening. The Lord will deliver you from all of Satan's evil, right, wicked right. schemes. He will keep you safe in the name of Jesus Christ. So go out and do it. Don't be afraid of his persecution. And, and, and before you go out, uh, pray, minister, and say, every one of you demons, get out. Hit the road. I say it all the time. We live yeah. in West Palm Beach. Every unclean spirit, get out of my town, my Come county, on. and my state, and my country. In the name of Jesus Christ, get out. You're all a bunch of losers. Get out, you demons. That's right. That's right. So, like, you know, pray like that, and then keep the sin out of your life, and then go out and do it. And so you can do it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise God. Well, Tom, thank you. I'm going to throw that banner up there. If someone wants to give again, anything that comes in today, I put your PayPal up there before. Um, I, I just copied and pasted it from your YouTube. I think that's your PayPal. If someone wants to give toward uh, Tom Fisher. Also, I put um, your YouTube on here. Just uh, like and share. Uh, all of his videos are really prolific. Every video is like a teaching in itself as you watch the Lord. Uh, the guy's anointed. He's powerful. So I appreciate you joining us, Tom. This is uh, just as priceless, really. You're empowering and changing the body of Christ. And I believe you're a pioneer in many ways. And so we look forward. Hopefully we can have you on here again. But uh, thank you for joining us today. And it's life changing. Thank you, brother. God bless you and everybody watching. So, uh, yeah, I built up a sweat doing that. I need to turn the air conditioning down a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, All right, we'll, bye, guys. Okay. See you, Tom. And we'll uh, connect later. Um,